Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to the final episode of the Highbury Squad for 2021. What a year it has been. We couldn't have done any of this without all of you knuckleheads. That's right. We love each and every one of you. Let's make it a special one. Let's go out with a big ass bang. Woohoo! <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to a live edition of the Highbury Squad. We got our gear going here. Yes, the HS crew is in full effect. And one more time, an introduction, and let's make it a good one. My podcast brother from another mother. <laughs> Woo! Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. What is this is the last one of 2021. So make sure you have a good one and don't get your neck broke or your throat slit. You know the script. At ease, squaddies. Let's do this. I'm pretending to host an old school 1980s game show tonight, Super Kev. Whoops, got to be careful there because I'm actually not wearing anything under the jacket. It's just the old velvet tie, which Ooh. is getting a little bit missed on the old Ooh. screen here. Is Super it warm Kev. There? Is it warm there? Well, today it is. It's been rainy and cold in Southern California. But if you're going to do it, Kev, do it right. Hey, I love our juxtaposition because I'm thinking when I play the videos, you're going to be looking a certain way. So I had to up my game tonight with the old spangly number. It's a New Year's Eve jacket. Look Ooh, at this. Super very, Kev, nice. Eh? Very, hey? nice. very nice. Very nice. Very nice. I should nice. have had Arsenal put on the back of it, to be honest no, with you. No, but I've got, I've got the Arsenal one. This is, from, this is from, do you remember every Christmas, uh -huh. my youngest lad has bought me a Bellerin doll. We've seen him off. <laughs> he bought me a Lacazette doll last Christmas. Lacazette's <laughs> playing well, but he's going. Uh-oh. And now, obviously, we must be doing something right because he bought me this polo T-shirt now. <laughs> so Arsenal must be moving in the right direction. I'm not banter for him anymore. I like it. He kept it clean and he kept it. He kept it. Kyle, you know, yeah, legit. Kyle kept it clean. I love it. I am sweating like swine after this hat. Um, under this hat, but yes, uh, that no Gary Glitter tonight. Yes, Newman, more, Bru more Bruce Forsyth. Kev. The syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do points make? Prizes. Go on. Who, who needs points tomorrow? <laughs> hey, the Arsenal. We need the points more than them. <laughs> Good evening to all of the usual suspects in the house. Let us know where in the world you are. It is New Year's Eve. We are, we understand a lot of you might be listening to the show uh, today on uh, on replay. Let me tell you something, Kev. What a year it has been on HS HQ, it's, and it's been brilliant. we're going to get to all of that maybe at the end of the show, mm -hmm. but. It has just been magnificent. And our growth um, over the last four or five months has been phenomenal. And anyone who's joining us who's new, anyone who's joining us who's an OG, this show does not exist without you. And Super Kev and I are beyond, beyond grateful. Kev, if, as you if, speak, I'm going to put some stuff up here. If, if, you like, if you like what you hear and you like being part of the squaddies please caress hit touch but don't break you can <laughs> lick it if you want but don't break that like button come on this is about you now new year's eve just touch it all right we're going to we'll go around the right. world we're going to go around a little bit of the world here kev we've got austin texas in mexico Whoa, um hey. tonight nut it nut it brilliant stuff I oh saw Croatia South London Brixton done one 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> we got Cape Town, South Africa. Wow. wow. Lovely Love. Place loves uh, my uncle uh, my mum's brother lives in south africa it's a beautiful beautiful part lovely of the world croatia what croatia. a place lovely amazing country as well amazing uh, arsenal fan circle thank you so much stanford uk yeah we've got rochester we yep. got Austin, texas. texas we love a little bit of texas yes i'm a mix of liberace and al capone <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I was going to say, like, if you're from Bethlehem on New Year's Eve, God bless <laughs> for Israel. <laughs> Toronto. We got Rich from Palmer's Green living Palmer's in Turkey. Palmer's Green living in Turkey. Yes. I love it. We love, love it. Rich. Love we got it. Canada. We got Toronto. We got Derby. South Africa again. Chai Town. Love Chai Town. Yeah. I just, I just got myself a deep dish pizza the other day. Ghana, what a place. Love it. Look, looking forward to the, I'm sure, looking forward to the AFCON. Definitely. Absolutely, Kev. We got Jamaica. Come on, Kev. Jimmy Mac. <laughs> Jimmy Mac. Yes. Jam down. We got the West Midlands. Oh, okay. Colorado. Igor. I'm, we are sending lots of love to our Colorado gooners. There's terrible fires going on in Colorado right now. Tony's College, Boulder, Colorado. They're dealing with a lot, Kev. Insane fires that have wow. called, insane winds that have stay, caused stay fires. Stay safe, Igor. Stay safe. Stay safe. New York, New York. God bless you. Love a bit of Essex. Who Essex. doesn't love a bit of Stephen, Essex? Eh? Essex boy. Love it. There's a good restaurant there called, uh, is it Cheesh? I went there with my cousins. Uh, Canucks in the house. Mm -hmm. Grand Cayman. Now you're making Ooh, us very, jealous. Very, nice. very nice. Very nice. Reading, Kenya. I mean, I love it, guys. Keep them coming. Um, we've got San Marino. Nice Paul. one. Yeah, David Moyes. <laughs> Are you really? Love it. Moisey. <laughs> we got Ethiopia in the house. Wonderful. Oh, oh. Um, we got country. Las Vegas. Totteridge girl now living in Italy. Nice one. Yes. Nice Moscow. One. Yes. One of my favorite cities. Love wow. Moscow. Minnesota, Amsterdam. We got Germany. Kev, we got everyone from around the world. We're, in we're global, babe. We're global. We're global. We're global. I, I want to see India. I want to see that part of the world, Asia, Indonesia, all that part of the world love as it. well. Absolutely. Maybe we get that after because the time difference. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. Well, listen, you guys, uh, Belfast, wonderful. Thanks mm. to everyone who's joining us from all these corners of the earth. You guys are amazing. I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping first. I'm going to give myself a yellow card, my last one of the season, which means I'm banned from the next oh, you, show. You meant to do it. You know on the flip. You're smart, self. You are so smart. Squaddies, <laughs> this is what's happened, right? Tell him, Sophie Kim. knows as soon as the clocks change, it's everything all... is rescinded. <laughs> she's smart. She knows she could get another five now until she, she's smart. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. So I just, I gave myself a yellow card. You know why, guys? Because I forgot to send Kev the link to get into the studio tonight. Okay. So I gave myself a yellow, and it is Mark. Look, look at this. It's a free. free it's a, yeah. Now we talk about no free. It's for Arsenal. Sophie gets a free one. Oh, Ty, God. we do love Super Kev. We oh, love him God. so much. Oh, I'm being called Jacker now. I love oh, it. Oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> I would be good at running VAR. I tell oh. you something. We would win every decision. Card oh. rescinded. Well said, LT. <laughs> Straight away, look, card rescinded. There you go. <laughs> I am correct. I am correct. is VAR. <laughs> wow, love Oman. it. Oman. Oh, we like Oman. Oman. Yeah. Love Oman. that. Lovely. Mm. Pepta. A, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Muscat. What a, what a place. Beautiful. Yeah. Indonesia, 3 a.m., Kev. Yes, Jonathan. that's it. Hey, happy new year. It's happy new year there already. The so. Aussies are in the house as well. Fantastic. Brilliant stuff. India, you got it, Kev. There you go. There <laughs> you go. India, brilliant. And rally North, North Carolina. Beautiful yeah. stuff, you guys. Okay, so um, thank you, Taib, my little lawyer. Your cards will be rescinded too. We start from... Kev, does everyone start from scratch? No, it's member. So <laughs> you have to get 10 yellow cards now. 
So if you're on four, you, you're laughing. You don't. <laughs> you, you get ten now, so you're right. Super Kev, you pull your screen down a little bit because we don't see the badge. We need to see that. Ba yes, the badge Kev, the look badge at that. There. The badge is there. Look at your guns. You still got all those guns, man. You're looking amazing. Yeah, look hey, at that. Listen, <laughs> hold on. Hercules, Hercules. I love that. You have that Eddie Murphy. Like, Hercules, Hercules. Hercules. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. The, the scene around the dinner, the, table. the dinner table. Oh, my God. That is oh. legendary. Absolutely. The clumps in it. Legendary. Oh, my God. What a great, what a great. <laughs> legendary. Uh, yeah. Wait, so if give KC red card, he forgot bow tie. No, he didn't. We're getting there. No, Ooh. he didn't. Is, that, <laughs> asking for a yellow and getting it wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so we're going to do some quick housekeeping. You know what? Today's show might go on a little a bit little longer, longer than that. Because <laughs> yeah, it's just a little. It, you know. Also, I have myself a little drinky poo because it's New Year's, Kev. I'm treating myself. Why I've not? I've got mine as well. There you go. Kev's drinking water. I'm actually having a Modelo beer in a champagne glass. Oh, nice Because I don't like the sugar. You know what I mean? No, Modelo's, no one needs... a good, Modelo's good, isn't it? But the truth is I also have one of these on hand. Oh, I'm oh, going to have man. a shot when Newman complains or Taib complains about start, something. Start complaining, <laughs> Newman! If she's going to have a shot every time you complain, this could be a very good show. I believe we have a listener in the house from Kurdistan as well, wow, Kev. Brilliant. Which is amazing. Brilliant. All right. I am channeling my Michael. Come on. Ooh, ooh. Do you so, want me to... <laughs> can I just... No, we do it at the end. We do it at the end. We do it Are you sure? End. We've got plenty to cover with Kev says no. anyway. He yeah. is. He's breaking the neck in the gym. He's making... Listen, I I'm going to Don't go start... to the gym. No gym, no weights. Tell him what you do, Kev. Burpees, burpees, burpees <laughs> and more burpees. <laughs> I do train, but it's, it's all burpees mostly. Different variations. So, yeah. Trinidad. I'm going to keep some of these coming. Matty K, our boy's in the house. Welcome, Matty K. He's in the pub and he's still listening to us. I Kevin, love that, pub. Matty K. Love it. <laughs> is, it what, is it with the old, is it with the old, uh, one of these in the ear or is it something in the ear or just <laughs> listening it? and you're talking to he's on a He's on a date with a hot chick and he's oh, like, excuse me, what did, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Whoa, I'm joining you from Chilean via Las, Tral Las Estralas base in Antarctica. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Absol okay. He's on the ice. Are Baby. you on the ice? Yes. Terence, are you on the ice? Wow. All right. He does have good genetics. You're totally right. Right, here we go. Sophie shots, 100%. I've got one, just the one, so I don't get no, too, like, so you know. Sophie. No, Sophie. <laughs> no, Call no, Tony, no. bring another. <laughs> so, Sophie, if you do that one, you have to have another one lined up. Come Maybe on. Maybe in a minute. Everyone's going to need a shot after I show you this. So I, <laughs> I asked Kev if I should show Newman's art. <laughs> and he said, no, wait till I'm back. And I said, okay, fine. Yeah. I asked Kev if it was right to show it. And Kev's like, sure, fine. Why not? New Year's Eve. <laughs> it's New the, Year's Eve. Let's this leave was, that in the past. <laughs> <laughs> this was Newman's. What, all 250 of you in live chat just either wear shades or just look away now. Because it does involve our good friend Gianni Judges a little bit. <laughs> This was our Christmas card from Newman. <laughs> Matty K, you might want to make your date in the pub look away. Here we go. <laughs> Don't know what's happening here, Kev. <laughs> There's I, I, a lot. <laughs> I, I tell you what, so you ain't got a bad little firm on your side. <laughs> I mean, your side is having... <laughs> Is it, my side's a uh, tell you what, her in front ain't too terrible. And the, the ring mean... girl, sex work is work. Yeah, but <laughs> Lee Judges looks like he, he's going for it, isn't he? Lee Judges. He's going for it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's involved Sue Barker, exactly, Lone oh, Star. Bless, bless, bless. <laughs> <laughs> of course, his wingman, Taib, is, uh, you know, he's on Virginia's it. losing it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's brilliant. I, I think it's quality. 
and it's to be left in 2021. <laughs> An insight into the disturbed mind is 100%. <laughs> also, yes, Kev, why has he got you in purple? He couldn't find an Arsenal shirt? What the heck is no, happening he, here? He, come on, you're talking about Newman here. So <laughs> that has a meaning. Obviously, there is a meaning behind him putting me in an Everton shirt. So <laughs> you have to ask him that. LT wants me to give him a red. We're not doing, <laughs> we're not going to give him a red tonight. Oh my God, he is right, said Fred. <laughs> anyway, um, there you go. We've shared it. That's it. Um, we're having a bit of fun tonight, you guys. I also wanted to share another picture just to brag a little bit. Because you know me, Kev, I don't like to brag, do I? No, not at all. Not at all. Only when I get 4-1 scores right, you know? Well, um, how many of them have you had this season? One. <laughs> oh, there you I go. You got one. But, I got well, two in a row, didn't I? Well, the 4-1 well, and the 5-1. Yeah, of, co of course, because you don't remember. You don't know, do you? So. <laughs> You're right, Fonzo. D judge, I sent it to judges. Kevin, I sent it, and he's like, Big he loved daddy, it. He loves it. He, he absolutely loves it. He loves Newman. Love he wants more. <laughs> K. Marlon's calling him Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You could drop the mic right now, Gunnosaurus, Tide Gunnosaurus. You're right. But anyway, I do have another image, Kev. I had an encounter with something great. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to do a show that's coming in the new year that's a little bit different. You guys are going to love. And it's about winning, but what it takes to be an athlete, okay? Exactly and we're going to have a, a variety of people on the show. I have a very good friend of mine who's the coach of the U.S. women's volleyball team who won gold in Tokyo. And we had lunch yesterday. And as soon as I was done with the lunch, I sent this to Kev right away. And my mind was swirling and I was saying, Kev, sitting with him and talking to him, the sacrifices – everything that it takes to get to that point and the pinnacle. And I said, I don't care, coach. Just when you come to lunch, bring this with you. And he did. Mm -hmm. The U.S. women's volleyball team won gold. And Kev, let me tell you something. Bucket list moment. I had nothing to do with it, but I'm going to brag about it. I wore an Olympic gold medal around my neck. This is Coach Luca, who's an amazing human being. And um, he bought it with him, especially for me and uh, Tony. And there it is, Kev, at lunch. And I've got it around my neck. Sophie, what a moment. Listen, let me tell you something. That's one one upmanship for you or me, for sure. I've never won an Olympic medal. Not even a bronze around <laughs> You my have neck. won a European trophy. And no, but won I've, the not, FA Cup I've, the not, I've not won an Olympic medal any medal, let alone a gold one. So, listen, the sacrifice, you spoke to him, the sacrifice, and I think th I think this show that we're going to do is going to be quite fascinating mm -hmm. because what you're going to do, you then start to delve into the mind of the, of the athlete and the coach and the real sacrifices that get made. There's a lot of sacrifices that people don't even realise. Mm -hmm. And it may seem trivial to the normal person. It may seem like nothing. But for instance, so New Year's Eve, you'd be in a hotel and obviously there'd be parties going on left, right and centre at the hotels. People be trying, they'd be trying, but you know, you've got Stuart Houston most of the time, Theo Foley was it at the time and then Stuart Houston, he'll be the jailer with the keys coming to check on, on the players to make sure the players are in their rooms. <laughs> you, you know, it's... But I can't wait to a, do that show with you. Big, it's a big game on, on New Year's Day. was always a big game, so. So yep. never had a Christmas, never had a, a New Year. So you think about that. All Christmas was, in fact, it was busier. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wait because I, I want, you're going to take us like behind, you know, you can't do... You can't do Christmas Day the way you want. You can't do New Year's Eve the way you want. You sacrifice it for like... You know, if you have a long career, great career, like 15, you know, 15 years. Um, and it's it's amazing. So I'm really looking forward to it. And Coach Luke is going to come and have a chat with us about all of that stuff too. Newman, it's not that I'm small. It's just everyone's so big. But you remember that movie, Roadhouse, with Patrick Swayze. What was the line? Mm -hmm. I thought you'd be bigger. Well, <laughs> in real life, I might be. Okay. 
why don't we get stuck in? Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, I wear them when I have to see all of your comments. Otherwise, I can't see shit, to be honest with you. I turned 50 this year. I'm going blind for fuck's sake. <laughs> Hey, All some, right. of these, some of Newman's art might make you go blind. I could tell yeah, you that. Much. Yeah, lost it. Right, here we go, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of fun at the beginning of the show. Let's get stuck into some business because this is the last Kevin says of 2021. He's got three questions for you guys. Are you ready to talk a little bit of Arsenal before Man City? Am I crazy to think that we might get something out of this game? Holy crap, here we go. Squaddies. Sophie, New Year's Eve Kev says, I'm shining. Look at me, I'm shining. <laughs> Question number one. Squaddies, will we need to rest our super kids at some stage in the second half of the season? Will we need to rest them? There's a lot of super kids there. Question number one. Be prepared because the bow tie does evolve a little bit as we go on with the show this evening. Um, I agree. Happy Christmas. I like that, by the way. Very clever. Sweet bow tie, super Kev. Thank and you. And Sam forgot about the lights. All right, let's get your comments coming in. Will we need to rest the kids at some point? 300 of you in live chat. Hit that like button, caress it, kiss it, nut it, as Super Kev says. Mm -hmm. At some point, it feels like it's going to have to be. Now, look at Emil Smith Rowe, Kev. He has not suffered from it at all, has he? You know, um, of course, Udegaard's come into the team. He's done a great job. I think at some point when you look at some of the fixtures coming up after Manchester City, African Cup of Nations coming too, it's going to it's going to be a necessity um at some point. So let's get uh, let's get to uh, to some of the comments from the squaddies here. Raul says most definitely. Mm -hmm. Mo loves your Tron bow tie. Harrison 100% yes, the way to domestic cup double and fourth spot. Hmm. Interesting. Domestic like cup that. double. I like, I like that. that. I like that a lot. Virginia's angle is interesting. Not possible, Kev. Otherwise, we'll drop off. Hmm. I kind of know what Virginia means about that, Kev. Well, we will. We're gonna. We will we're see. Gonna, we're gonna see. Archie says yes, we will. Um, Happy Christmas says no. Roll with the kids. They are young. Kev, can you talk to me about this whole concept of? Remember when people were worried about, so I have this for you from my cousin, um, Louis, right? Who I sent the questions to. He's not on online. He goes, he, he wrote, youngsters, kids, if well managed, will get individual match day rest. Gabby only playing last few games. Emil Smith thrown now on the bench and Saka will get the same at some point. It's all down to the management is what Louis says. I get happy Christmas as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about young and having all the energy in the world, like kids do, and they can go on all day. You give them sugar, they go on extra days. But then also the juxtaposition of the Rooney-Owen syndrome. Did they play too much, too young? Yeah, but I think what you've got to understand is because you've got energy, that doesn't mean you could you play the game at the, to the highest level all the time. It doesn't mean that because you're young. Especially when we're getting in the second half of the season. I don't want to go too deep into what I'm going to talk okay. about. But what what we have to understand is things start to get a lot more difficult as we move on during the season. But as we move on during the season, that's when people get tired. Because why? They've never done it. Saka's been involved in, Euro in, in the European campaign with England. He's had virtually no rest. Mm-hmm. Martinelli went to the Olympics. Virtually no rest. I know he wasn't in the team for long stretches, but these guys still going to... Because they haven't done the course and distance. Maybe this... Maybe Mikel Arteta is pulling a masterstroke, keeping ESR on the bench at times, because he's going to need him to step up 
in the team at some stage. So I don't want to get too deep into it. Sure. But we do have a lot of young players. So Yeah. And and Kev, we've gone um we've we've gone deep into both domestic cup competitions, you know. The wear and you see that with wear and tear, like if you know, like the top teams who are in the Champions League, they're in the FA Cup, they're in the League Cup. They're, they're, they're having to like combat the Premier League as well. Let's get some more comments up for you. Stephen says, no, but we need three signings in the window. Going to get to that as well, Stephen. Hold on. How could he say no, but we need three signings? <laughs> Explain That's yourself. A, yeah. I mean, no, no, but we need three signings. Well, if, we, if, if it's a no, then we don't need the signings because the youngsters are going to play. But I think what he's saying is no, maybe what he should have said, no, not right now, but. We're going to need... But what was the question? The question was, will we need to rest them at some stage in the second half of the season? See? You you know Kev doesn't like grey areas. I I encompass everything in it. So, he's not Stephen, you're not getting away with that one. (laughs) I love it. Mark says, no, we don't have that luxury with our squad quality. Mm. GSM says, yes, uh, when we play Burnley or Leeds at home. Newman says, we need to rest them, but Arteta will kill them like Wenger burnt out all of his best players. I get why some fans, Kev, are a bit scared of that because Fabregas, we relied on him so much. Jack Wilshire, we relied on him so much. So I totally get kind of what, what Newman is saying. Um, Tony says, yes. Andrew says, rotation will be key. LT says, no, if you love playing the game, being tied, tied is secondary in my opinion. <sighs> I'm just going to let oh, the athlete really? answer that. Oh, I'm, really, LT? I'm no athlete. Oh, really, LT? Being tired is nothing. Okay. Okay. If being tired is nothing, then, you know, we would have, we should have been in the Champions League of quite a few seasons on, on, on the spin. You know what? You know what, though, Kev? I think some fans are a little bit tired of hearing Klopp and Ragnick and Conte moan when Conte's team has had like a winter break. Man United have almost had a winter break, like complaining about being fatigued and tired. Liverpool have played a lot of football over the last three or four seasons. Mm -hmm. I get that. But when they're kind of bitching and moaning, it's starting to sound like bitching and moaning versus to, to, to gain an advantage versus really caring. I know they care about the welfare of the players, but I loved Sean Dyche's take on it. We here at Burnley, we look after our players. Mm. We we take care of them. But he also said we don't play as much football as some of those other um, teams. But he also said Frank Lampard was playing 60 games a season and this didn't come up before. Well, Sophie, here's the thing. It's crazy that the rich are complaining about being tired when they've got the biggest squads. Exactly. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. How are they bitching? Would they rather not be in the Champions League? Would they rather not be in, you know, certain things? Exactly. No, of course they would love to be in. So that's why you play more games. That's part and parcel of the... But that's why you have the bigger squad. So when a Kovacic can't play and then you could put a Kante in, so exactly. Good. Don't be bitching about anything. Yeah. Yeah, don't be a Lukaku. Okay. <laughs> Mars Gunner says, rotate, not rest as much. Aaron says, no. Uh, Sean says, uh, no rest. We're playing mostly one game a week. Kev, what do you... I'm, I'm sure you're going to get into that a little bit. I get what Sean is saying. No European football. We're playing Premier League and we're playing in the Cup still. Um so I, I get that. A Swedish Guna, we need to have some rotation in the squad. Taib, I'll tell you, you better be careful tonight. Uh, Sam says, no, not unless they get injured. This isn't a lot of football for athletes of their calibre. Mm. It's, about, you see, it's not a matter of a lot of football. It's a matter of when you haven't done it before. Mm. That's when the fatigue, because it's not just... Physically, it's mentally as well. Yeah. It's like, you know, when I'm going to go work out on the 3rd of January, it's going to be painful, really painful. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. Yeah. And hurt you know it's going to hurt. Uh huh. That's sometimes the worst because you're thinking about the pain before you actually do this. <laughs> and the idea of doing it the next day is going to hurt. When you've got you... all the doms, you've got, you're aching. 
<laughs> trying to get the six pack back at 50 kids. Oh, geez. I'll change all, but there's no Europe. Um, that guy, yeah, super Kev, super Kev. Hi, Troy. Uh, SDQ, yes, when we are playing the domestic cups. Uh, Matthew says, no, the kids got more balls than the highly paid superstars. Mo Falla, uh, yes, at some point. Emil Smith Rowe uh, didn't have the Euros. I, the, his, him not being in the team's a little bit different, but yeah, totally get that. Maybe, if, maybe saving him a bit, Solf. Yes. And yeah. I, I'm going to get into this at the end okay. a little bit, all right? Okay, Stephen says without Europe, it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, Emil Smith Rowe could even be a false nine the way he's finishing. If it works for Man City, why not? Rotation, yes. Rest, no. R says, I think we should not play them in the cup. We're not in Europe, so 38 match isn't much. I mean, it's easy to say when you're not playing the 38 matches. Uh, name blocked. Uh, Emil Smith Rowe Martinelli should still be fresh, plus, we're not in Europe. Barry says, a bit of rotation needed. Already seen it a bit with Emil Smith Rowe. And you know what? It has worked. You've got to give the manager credit for that. And Emil Smith Rowe, mega. Mucho credit for taking it on the chin and coming on every time and scoring. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I, I think he knows. I think he knows he's going to get his games. He yeah. knows. He knows. Yeah. 33 fivers. I'd like 33 fivers right now. <laughs> we need to rotate a little bit. Having Pepe um, show is what he, he's not going to be here, though, Pepe, for the next few weeks, is he? Mm. Yeah, but it's. To the end, remember. Yeah, okay. Uh, Harvey says, not when we don't have Europe. Um, yes, however, who replaces them? That's a good question, Kev. Mm -hmm. Who yeah, replaces them? I'll answer. Them? I'll answer. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, Brock the man, <laughs> man City bow tie. <laughs> uh, does Tommy Yasu and White count as super kids? I don't. Well, do they well, count? Well, they don't really. They don't really, but they're, they're still young. They're still so young. You know, they're still Tommy so Osu young. just had a birthday. He's only 23, right? You know, so... I think Ben White is, what, 22? Yeah, what? so maybe they're just outside. But no, he's 24, I'm gonna, Ben I'm, White. I'm going to put Tommy Yasu in it because, because we signed him when we signed him. He would still qualify for uh, the under-23s. <laughs> so he's classed as a, as, a, as, a young, as a young talent. Scoop says January will be all hands to the pump, especially with AFCON. Uh, Dave Brown's asking what the question is. Rewind the tape, Dave. <laughs> I love these listeners sometimes. Tony says we need to rotate. Yes, Asfar, he is a legend. Matthew, youngsters bleed the club more than your Ozils and Obers. True, Absolutely 100%, true. Matt. Matthew, 100%. Yep. Marlon says, we're going to win tomorrow. One love to the Arsenal. Raid says, after January, we will not have a problem with fitness. Right. I will keep your comments coming. Um, thank you, Marion. Same thing to you and yours. God bless. Don Juan says, you can't win anything with kids. I think he's having a little bit of a... <laughs> uh, a that, that's a Brixton lick. <laughs> <laughs> Even Coach, uh, Coach Beard from Ted Lasso had a joke about Alan Hansen and that. Um, when he was on last week. Uh, Sharon says, definitely we do. While we have no Europe, we should take advantage. Rotation, not necessarily extended resting. Um, Stephen says, no, as there's no European football. All right, we'll keep those comments coming and I will keep putting them up for you guys. And you're right, hit the like button. Absolutely. Matthew says, Rooney and Owen were overhyped by the media. Oh, they were... Did no, you miss... No, did you weren't. miss... Kevin played with Wayne Rooney. No chance. Kevin was there when Rooney came through. No chance. Rooney... They were quality players. Come on. Remember that goal he scored against Arsenal at 16? No, Kev. I never remember that goal. <laughs> I, I was just about to give him a mouthful. T tell him, Kev. I was, I, was just, I was just about to give him a mouthful. Because when he picks the ball up, I make a run in between Sol Campbell and the, the I think it's Martin Keown or whatever. I make a run in between. And I'm expecting the ball to be played. So he's used the run and just put it on his right foot, obviously unhinged the defence. And then he's obviously bent one in the top corner. So I'm just about to blast him. So, so I've turned and I've got just about to blast him. You beauty! <laughs> he was going to be called another B word, but he stuck it in the top corner. 
The kid was special. He was uh, special, 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 special. I mean, that goal is one of the greatest highlights in Premier League history. Yeah. This is truth. It was against us, but that, that yeah. Was, that was his calling card. That was him emerging from nowhere. Rooney wasn't finished by 27, you guys. Stop that. Owen had hamstring injuries. Kev, can you can you handle this one as a striker as well? I'm, I mean, R- R- Rooney, why, why, how was he finished? He's, he's, he weren't finished that day. It was Manchester United's best, Manchester United's best ever goal scorer. Ever. And currently still England, by the way, until... I, I, I think about it. That's, that's huge, man. That's huge. He probably didn't get the accolades for England that that some of them teams should have got. But remember when he was young, he took he, what was it the was it the Euros that he mm-hmm. took by storm, got injured, and our luck we have no luck in these tournaments. We no. get people sent off. We had a Sol Campbell goal disallowed. You remember where it hit the bar and went against? We've had some we've had some terrible luck in these tournaments. Before Japan, um, was it Beckham, the metatarsal? metatarsal. Rooney had the, the Rooney had the, a boot on, he had done an yeah. ankle and all that. He done a metatarsal as well, didn't he? So again, you know, we've had some terrible luck. Yeah, yeah, defo. Okay, I'm gonna keep putting your um and let's not forget, Michael Owen had some signature moments in his career, you guys. Here's the pro that we're gonna get to that because there's a question coming from Kev that I think there's going to be a good juxtaposition in terms of the answer. The Lampard shot. If there was VAR, that would be a goal right now. Well said, Ian. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I think Ian. Ro- I think Wayne Rooney is a little bit disrespect- disrespected because of some of the nonsense he's done off the pitch. And that's got nothing to do with the footballer he was on the pitch. For me, our barring Dennis Burkamp, right, and Thierry, one of the greatest goals I've ever seen. Was it in the Premier League, the goal against City, Kev? The scissor kick? Was that a Premier yeah, League goal? Was yeah, that a cup? Yeah, it, was. It, it was, right? It was. Yeah. Forget about it. The the uh, goal with Van Persie. Oh, I'm sorry the, to bring the, that the pass, up. The pass and the, the finish. Look, uh, listen, there's iconic moments. Do you know what, Sophie? I think a lot of people forget a lot of these moments. Mm-hmm. A lot of people forget. Look how many titles these guys won. You know, he went there, you know, first, what was it? His first European game for Manchester United scores a hat-trick. Yeah, it's, 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 he was incredible for Manchester United and played probably five different positions. If there's a striker, other than Mo Salah, if there's a player that I would have taken any day of the week at the Arsenal, Rooney would be the dude. And just because he doesn't look like David Beckham and he is not as marketable, you know, there's something about it. I don't understand what it is. He's better than Beckham. But he's, Come on now. He is an absolute legend of the game. You Come know on. what I mean? Come on. Come on now. Okay. All right. Stay fresh. What are you saying? There's uh, This is what I find annoying right now, Sophie. A lot of fans are more interested in insulting players with one-liners because they learn that from YouTubers. They, when, Yeah, I mean, you know, fat, stay fresh. You stay fresh, baby, with your name all day long. Don't worry about it. Right, I would take Drogba as well. I think Philip Senderos still sees Didier Drogba in his dreams, Kev. <laughs> uh, uh, looking around. <laughs> the guy was, listen, let's let's be honest. Oh, my God, what a player. He was a one-man it, wrecking crew up there. One again, man. Again, Kev, not, I don't know if Drogba gets enough respect, to be honest. Well, I, I, think he's, he's, I think he's respected, but people forget. Do you know what, Sophie? People forget you when you've retired. People forget you, Soph. They do. Obviously, the Ch- Chelsea Not fans... Not you, Kev. We haven't forgotten you. Chelsea fans will will remember him, obviously. But you know when you talk about in the sphere of football, Sophie, mm-hmm. fans, people... For, Sophie, I'm telling they you, do. people forget you. They do. Pe- you, you know. Listen, the best header of the ball still, for me, any day of the week, Gabriel Batistuta. <laughs> Boom. You know what I mean? Like, people forget, even they forget about, look, Duncan Ferguson, someone saying, your partner in crime, the mm. two of you. Stephen Gerrard was saying the other day on TV, Kevin Campbell, Duncan Ferguson, muscle. The last time Everton, re- they felt really had a bit of, you know, that muscle. Intimidation. And Intimid- that intimidation. A bit of intimidation. Yeah. Um, we're we're yeah. going to do a whole... 
we did an icon versus legend show a little while ago, but we'll do an underrated, underappreciated, but also a reminder. We've got a lot of great shows coming up in the new year, you guys. All right, here we go with Casey's second question of this New Year's Eve Kev Says special. Question number two. I'm still shining. Is this transfer window really the key to a top four challenge for the Arsenal? Is it the key, this transfer window? Question number two. Question number two. Is that the pol police coming after you, Kev? Of course, always. All right, so we'll get it uh, started. By the way, lots of Drogba, Batistuta, um, also Miroslav Closer, Kev. He so didn't get well about it. internationally, yeah. Yes. But did he really get the respect he deserved as a as a, a team player? I don't no. think he did. No, I not don't at think all. He did. Okay, Lethal. so he was lethal. Here, we, here we go. I'm going to read cousin Louis out first. Everyone, very simply put, transfer window vital for a top three finish. He puts in a top mm -hmm. three finish. Uh, good evening to you as well, Wayne. Good evening, Rancid. Good evening to those joining us a little bit late. Raid says yes. Nicholas says yes. Need a striker and a CDM, KC. Good evening from Portugal. Stephen says the most important window ever. Three players, two CMs and a CF as well. Chad says yes, we can put all the pressure on Martinelli. We also need, we can't put all the Pressure on Martinelli, I think he means. Uh, we also need a CM. Oh, my God. Jean-Pierre Papin. Off at the time, he was... Who, who was a, a volley king, he on, or Van Basten, Kev? My God. I mean, Papin used to score loads of volleys, didn't he? His <sighs> runs... Mikey, his thanks runs for that memory. Were quality, were quality. Yeah. Absolutely Can't wait quality. to do that show. That's going to be fun. Mr. Waffles is back, Super Kev. Mr. Waffles, happy... Hey, hold on. Happy New Year to you. Where you been? <laughs> and and you disagree? What's it? I don't think it's key, but it would be helpful to get. Ha See, this is what I don't understand. Now you pissed him off again, Waffles. But this is what I don't understand. So, how do you think it's not key? But anybody who's got a butt in there don't know what they're talking about. So it's either it is or it isn't. Yep. So I don't think it's key. But you can't then say, but we need, because that just dispels the first part. Totally agree. Come on, Mr. Waffles. Nino, it's key. We are two signings away from top four. Virginia, true, Kev, but also depends on what our rivals do as well in the window. Virginia, no buts, darling. No buts. Come on. Evgeny says he's not sure. Um, yeah, that's I mean, fair. I he was. That's fair. Not sure, that's fair. Newman, say something good. <laughs> Two of you harassing this chat. LT says, yes, yes, and yes. We need another Basuma. Okay, it looks like we're more likely to sign Lamptey than Basuma, Kev. The Lamptey rumours seem to be swirling and growing. Yeah, but listen, I, I, I get it. Lamptey, if you have Lamptey there and you have Tommy Asu, you're in good shape, aren't you? Let's let's be honest. You're in really good shape. Yeah, we got boy. No, this transfer window is irrelevant from where I'm looking. What we need right now is consistency from who we do have in the house. We can't bank on signings we might make. So, so Sophie, this boy Ten Dio is dispelling the Africa Cup of Nations. So that doesn't matter. And it's very. Listen, we're, this is the one competition. In MLS here, um, they have to combat different competitions during the season because they play the season when they don't have to compete as much with the NFL, right? Um, Kev, the African Cup of Nations, and we'll get to that eventually because I do want to get your feedback on what Ian Wright was saying. It's almost like there's a little disrespect for the African Cup of Nations because Not it puts little. people out. Yeah, it Huge. puts people out, Kev. And unfortunately, it's when they can play in the window that they can play it. And people don't complain like this when the Euros come along or Copa America 
comes along. So I think we need to kind of stop and think the type of players that do play for African Cup of Nations. And I think Ian had a little bit of a point when it came to how we're viewing it. It's almost like it's an inconvenience, whereas for them, it's their Copa America, it's their Euros, Kev. Yeah, Sophie, look, the, the biggest problem is, and this is because of the, the governing body, which is FIFA, <laughs> chooses to play the Africa Cup of Nations when? Mm -hmm. During the season. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be, it's going to create more of a contention, isn't it? If yep. it's played during the season, Euros are played in the close season. Copa America's played in the close season. World Cup's played in the close season, but the Africa Cup of Nations isn't. And the question is, why? <laughs> why isn't it? Why, is, why isn't it played in the summer? It's, it's terrible. But mm -hmm. you're setting them up to be shot at because obviously you're taking their best players because the best players are going to be playing for their countries. Right. And why do people think that Mo Salah doesn't want to play for his country or Riyad Mahrez or, you know, Thomas Partey or Aubameyang even? You know, it's, um, it's a little bit disrespectful in my opinion. Matthew says, as long as players are brought in, regardless of having a jab or not, we're seeing in Syria and in Liga that they're starting for the January transfer window, Kev. They're talking about if, you know, having vaccinations in order to, to get that, to get those deals. Um, I think we're getting into a bit tricky territory, but we don't want to get stuck into that today. Tammy says, most definitely we need a striker. Raul says, no, because we're not there, but it can help for us to challenge. Mask Gunner says, Jovic has COVID today, so less likely to be a loan signing for us. I think he's so, he's had a nightmare at Real Madrid. I mean, I, I think we can do better. I'm not saying that he's not a good player, you guys. But you know what, Solf? Here's the funny thing about Jovic. Before we went to Real Madrid, he was scoring for fun. He was scoring for fun. Goes to Real Madrid. Doesn't quite mm -hmm. happen for him at all. It's suffered. Why? Because Benzema's, a, uh, Benzema's been unbelievable. Yeah, he's been he really insane. Has. He has. Ashton says, it's key like when we didn't sign Suarez back in 2014. Good shout, Ashton. Facts from Ashton. Good shout. Good shout. Um, no, Ashton, sorry. No, this team's mentality and the job Arteta does to maintain that is key. SDQ says, yes, for me, January transfer will help us. Two CMs says the kid. Um, uh, let's see. Thank you so much from the Darlington fan. Absolute key for us finishing top four. We need reinforcements in key positions. Right. I'm going to keep putting your comments up. Mark says two quality signings, striker and box-to-box -box midfielder. Well, in my opinion, Thomas Party is the box-to-box -box guy, but he's not able to be the guy a lot of the time because of some of the other things that we have to combat, Kev. I think it's going to start happening a little bit more because maybe he has less of that responsibility when he's playing with Xhaka. With Sambi, I think he needs to be more of the protector. But don't you think we could unleash I think Partey? he needs to be more... I think he needs to be more protector with Xhaka as well. Because have you noticed, like I said, I keep falling off my sofa because Xhaka's playing further forward and he's passing the ball forward, mm -hmm. Sophie. So maybe Arteta sees Thomas Partey as someone he could trust who sits in there because we've seen Zaka play there and we can't trust him. So Partey seems to be the one we could trust a bit more in there. So maybe we're going for somebody to compliment and be a box to box player beside him. So, uh, Gun Gunnison says this window is more than just key, but vital to our quest for honours. Lone Star says, yes, it is. It's a platform to kick on and fight for top four, but it depends on the availability and quality of uh, in the right positions that we bring in. And also, you don't want to get ripped off in January, Kev. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we, we've seen that a lot and it's not an easy window. I agree with you, K Marlon. Um, Craig says, yes, uh, to strengthen our squad. Yes, what a player he was. Pierre Van Hoydonk, very nice. My old teammate, Davos yeah, Davos Suka. Suka. yeah, he was quality. Have you played with Van Hoydonk at uh, Forest. Forest? Yeah. Quality, huh? Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, I was the, I was the, re you remember he went on strike? I know. <laughs> I, I was the reason. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean Thanks to bring so. that up. <laughs> the old, old Moving on. <laughs> 
I was the reason he went. I was the reason. Happy New Year, Pierre. Yeah, because because Forrest sold me. Um, the old Spurs chairman took over at um, a, a, a new consortium took over at Nottingham Forest, and Irving Scholar. Do you remember Irving Scholar, who was at yes. Spurs? He was their chairman. He then was the chairman of Forest, and we got promotion. We, me and Pierre were the highest goal scoring duo in Europe, and he he sold me. <laughs> it was a dig at the arse. I'm telling you, I know it. He sold me. Pierre went absolutely ballistic. He went ballistic. I love it. He went ballistic. And um, he Wait, didn't come back in until when, Christmas. That's not when you went to Trabs on, was it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what an experience you had there. Oh, listen, I don't. I would not change it for the world, so they really love you. In, you will never have to pay for a kebab in Turkey ever. I, in Jane Trabs on, no chance. Well, yeah. Well, I couldn't <laughs> even. I couldn't even get to the cab, to the, to the kebab house. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's you remember like, when you signed Kevin? You showed up and you're like, "Where did all these people come listen, from?" <laughs> Trabs on's an hour and a half flight from Istanbul. I fly mm -hmm. to Istanbul, and there's ten thousand Trabs on fans at the airport. It's it's crazy. I love it. It was crazy. Talk but, about but playing in those derbies. What an experience. Those... Listen. Brilliant. The we'll do that crazy. as well. We've crazy. got a, derby, a special derby series coming up. Listen, you guys are going to be spoiled for 2022. I'm just saying. Derby shows, more trips down memory That's lane. That's it, Craig. Tell them. Drop down room. the like button. Drop. Come on, people. Right. This is our last show of the year. So, Kev, I was going to think, I was thinking it's time to bring out Vinny maybe one last time. Uh, for bring, bring him out. There's 450 people in live chat, Kev. Listen, we need a minimum 250 then. Come on, do a Vinny. Just tap the like, hit it, touch it, or even leak it. It's all right. Just make sure you ring, you rap, take their red off off if they don't touch it. Come on. <laughs> take their red off. Do a Vinny, guys. Come on. Samurai Soph. Samurai Soph. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Um, Let's see. We've got, uh, let's see, where were we right here? One more. One more. One more. Yeah, we got one more. And then I did have a comment from, it was going to it was gonna tickle your, make you laugh here a little bit, but I've lost it now. But Guna Russ is in the house. And Kev, it is his missus, his better half. It's her birthday today. Oh, Jen. Jenny. Jen. Yes. Jenny, happy birthday to you. I, I truly hope. You have a fantastic day, evening, and new year 2022. I hope Ross has spoiled your rotten. If he hasn't, put him out in the garden. <laughs> put him out if he hasn't. I know he's a good man. He'll look after you. Listen, have a lovely one. Happy New Year's Eve and a beautiful and wonderful 2022 to you, Ross, and the family. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. And also, by the way, everyone's saying they can't play AFCON in the summer because it's so hot. Well, look what they did. Look what they've done for... They've stopped football for the World Cup in the Qatar, Cup. people. All right? Just Won't saying. Won't do that for Double AFCON combinations, will they? Won't Double do that. Standards. Double <laughs> standards. All right. We're going to go to question number three, where Kev asks the bonus question and he wraps things up on this fine New Year's Eve. Thanks to so many of you for joining us on your New Year's. Here we go. Question and the bonus Number three. I'm, I'm shining. Question number three. Does a, a Bamiyang stay or does he go? Does he stay or does he go? That's question number three. So let's recap. Will we need, number one, will we need to rest our super kids at some stage in the second half of the season? Do you think? Question number two, is this transfer window the key to a top four challenge? And number three, does Aubameyang stay or does he go? Tell me your thoughts. Listen. This is the last one of 2021, everyone. So let's make sure this is an absolute belter. Shining. Shining. 
like me. Anyway, don't let me have to brought no necks. Be good, everybody. And let's get into the question, so. Let's go! I had that on speaker this morning. <laughs> Vinny and Vespa were like, what is Uncle Kev? Get up, everyone, get up. <laughs> That livened you up, didn't it, Sophie? Eh? Oh my God. I saved it, especially oh, for the it. morning, by the Let's way, to go. give me that love extra that. oomph. Um, brilliant stuff, uh, <laughs> Kev. Right. K Marlon gonna... says go. <laughs> K Marlon says go. And then I've got um, cousin Louise. All right. Mm -hmm. As much as I love Oba, his time is up. When he arrived at the Arsenal, he was the fastest in Europe. Now he's not even the fastest in the team. Premier League is a different beast and his game is all about speed. Only have to look at Michael Owen for a similar example. Kev is so true. Sometimes when player speed goes, Michael Owen, once the hamstrings kicked in and he had that problem, his game was, I mean, you remember the, the breakaway goal against Argentina in the World of Cup. Course. How many couldn't times have you done that for Liverpool? You couldn't, couldn't ca catch you played, him. How many times do you have your Everton play against? Yeah, couldn't, couldn't catch him. You know, couldn't catch him. He's, he's short, he's he's quick, and he's lively. But you take that speed away, and you need you need other strings to your bow. Mm -hmm. You when, really do. When you just said he's short, he's quick, all of a sudden my mind went to he's blonde, he's <laughs> slick, his name's a anyway. Um, uh, Afsar, Afsar says stay. George Thomas says go. Stephen says go. Uta B says go. Archangel says get him out. Guna Russ. Uber is finito benito. Uh, Sean says bin Uber. Mr. Waffle says if he goes, we're going to pay for it. We might have to. Money wise, yeah. <laughs> another yeah. another bodge job. But yeah, I mean, how are we going to pay for it? I, he's unfortunately, not, he's... Sof, unfortunately, these guys have been our, our top senior players for a few years. That's mm -hmm. why they. We'll have we'll end up paying for it, mm -hmm. but you always want youngsters to come through and show that they can do it, right? We've been crying out for Martinelli on here. You've been championing for Martinelli. All of a sudden, Martinelli comes in and he does the business. His work rate. In fact, what they've had to do with Martinelli, they've had to calm him down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because he was just like, you know, it was like one of them wind-up toys. He'd just run everywhere. But they've had to really explain to him. And now he's a, he's a bit more conservative. He's still got high energy, but he's a bit more conservative. He's a bit smarter how he uses it, his energy. I think that's really key. That's what comes with a little bit of experience. So if we're helping them, if we can get these youngsters to do what they're doing, then maybe... Like everyone's saying, you know, Bamiyang might be surplus to requirements, but and we you can't will pay for it. And you can't bench Martinelli now. You just can't do that. I mean, no. you can manage him still, rest him where you need, but he, you're not going to bench Martinelli for Bamiyang, you guys. You just no. not, it's just not the right thing no. to do. No. Um, Rinat says it's time to say goodbye. K, K Marlon, listen, no rearview mirror syndrome. We've been too sentimental as a club for years and years and years, and it has bitten us in the backside over and over and over again. It is time for us to move on and cut the cloth. And this is the end of that era, the Wenger Unai Emery signing era. It could be that Pepe ends up going. We know Lacazette is leaving. El Nenny's going to go. There's still rumours about Xhaka wanting to go back to Borussia Mönchengladbach. You know, there's a turn, there's something turning and there's a new Arsenal emerging. Mm -hmm. And the DNA and the culture and the evolution of that requires us to clean house, get the broom out. I'm sure Kev's going to tell us exactly what he thinks. State, what experience has he given on he the first two seasons, Lone Star, sensational amazing yeah not lately newman says goodbye oh but don't fit don't fit the playing style bad attitude george thomas good evening george better for the team to move forward leroy says he's got to go darkest guna says for if you're saying he's staying then tell us why he needs to go says virginia we've been better without him a million we've scored like what 17 goals maybe more 
since he's been gone? We've been we've been frightening. And even before that, we struggled against a lot of the lower teams, didn't we? Now mm -hmm. we're beating them convincingly. So. I tell you what, Kev, if if we're able to get something out of Liverpool in this EFL Cup two-legged semi-final without him, you know, of course he was integral in that FA Cup win. But if this team can win a domestic trophy without him, oh. you know, that's a big, that's you're a really on, big deal. You're on the road then, Solf. Yeah. Trust me, all... you are, with these youngsters, you are on the right road. 33 fivers, do you know where his head is at? Kev has been saying this for a couple of weeks now. When we've been winning, where is the captain of this football club saying, well done, boys, I'm proud of you. I hope to be with you again soon. Where is he saying, I love this club so much. I will do you proud again. I may have made some mistakes, but this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Where is that? That's where his head is. His head ain't at Arsenal, that's for sure. Exactly. Wayne says, oh, we'll go in January. Uh, Nobby says Oba goes ASAP. Christoph says Oba stays through the season, goes this summer. Maybe we get more bang for our buck, Christoph, in the summer. Bye, bye Oba. Thanks for the memories, says Mark. Mo says, no, Oba, it's over. Time to move on. Frederick, Oba stays for squad depth. Could happen. Yeah. Could happen. Oba must if you stay. Can't, if, you, if you can't bring someone in. Yeah. Um, Oba needs to leave ASAP. Stephen says he has to go. His relationship with the managers. I, I, I just think Mikel's lost respect for him. It's done for me. We'll see what Kev thinks in a minute. I'll put more of your comments up before Kev gives us the responses to all of his questions. We're giving you a little bit of a radio show style tonight. Mm -hmm. Staying a little bit longer. It's New Year's Eve. We're all hanging out and there's 460 of you in live chat joining us as well need 300 likes guys come on like hit, just hit the like button just hit it don't mess around just hit it this is for you as much as it is for us i just will shoot it. this vodka if we get 20 likes in the next two minutes all right i don't know how to monitor that because i don't have the other page open but go i'm on. sure someone will tell us <laughs> don't worry about that go on boys and I'm, sure, girls. I'm sure taib will be all over that one um who wants to buy him if he's not willing to take a pay cut you know, there are a lot of players at the twilight in their career, Kev, that take a pay cut in order to keep playing football. He don't. He won't want to take a pay cut. Doesn't need to. Maybe Newcastle. I say send hey, him there. Sophie, Sophie, the, the fact of the matter is it might end up costing Arsenal, but there will be clubs who want him. Let's have it right. There will be clubs who want him. So... Maybe I should do the Obama one. Let's do it. Obama Yang one first. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's get into it, Kev. I'm so going to keep I'm, putting I'm, everyone's I'm, comments up. I'm going to do three, two, one on this one. So I'm going to do Ted Rogers. Yang. Ted Rogers. Three, two, one. You maybe used to do it so quick, and and the, he used Dusty to read bin. the things. And Dusty Bin used to get willed out. <laughs> Never had no connection with Dusty Bin, and he just used to say Dusty <laughs> Bin whenever he wanted it. Oh, Does Obama Yang stay or go? As far as I'm concerned, I look at it. I look at how, what has it been, two, three weeks now since the incident? And Aubameyang hasn't come out and said, listen, guys, I'm committed to the club or whatever. Aubameyang's gone, as far as I'm concerned. He's done. So, yeah, uh, we might have to pay some of his wages wherever he goes. But I just think someone who's got his resume, but he's very prideful. And he'll want to go somewhere and, and, and do the business. He won't, he won't want to be playing second fiddle to Martinelli, Lacazette and all that. No chance. No chance. I don't, that's my opinion. He might prove me wrong. But the fact of the matter is he hasn't come out and said, I'm fully committed to Arsenal. I lost, I lost the captaincy, etc. That, to me, is a dangerous place to be. And mm -hmm. do you know what? If he's not committed, I'd rather go with what we've got and, and not have him involved. You know? And that's why uh, that's why I think him being estranged and moved away from the, from the team is the right thing to do if he's not going to commit. Mm -hmm. So well done, Mikel Arteta and the football club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mikey says you're breaking Curtis's heart. Um, did we, did, did we, re no, Archangel says we need seven more before I shoot it. Um, 
name blocked seems to think we have an Abamyang agenda. Let me tell you something about Abamyang. Kev and I went back and forth a lot, even towards the tail end of last season where I wanted him benched and Kev kept standing by him and saying, he needs to play. You have to play your best players. And name block, you're so wrong here, but I'm going to let Kev address this. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm part of the strikers union name blocked. I back Aubameyang, even when he's not doing the business, I backed him because he's our best striker. 100% he's our best striker. Last season, when he, he was looking real poor, a long stretch is last season, I, was, I backed him. I even backed him after he got benched in the North London derby. You remember, South last yes, season? you backed him, and we had an argument him. about that, I, I, a discussion. Yeah. We, we, no, we had, we, we, we had our heated debate about yes. it, and I said he will come back in the team because he's our best striker. And he said he shouldn't be, he shouldn't, he should be nowhere near the team if he is the captain and he can't turn up. And I said he served his punishment, etc. So I don't know what agenda I've got. If Name Block could tell me what my agenda is, fair enough. But the fact of the matter is, he is the captain of the Arsenal Football Club. And mm -hmm. he is the one who made sure he is no longer captain of the Arsenal Football Club. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he messed up. Nobody else. He messed up. Yeah. So here's the things, though, Sophie. And this is for Name Block especially. If I have an agenda, why hasn't Aubameyang come out and said, I'm fully exactly. committed to Arsenal? If I've got the agenda, why hasn't exactly. he come out and said that? See, this badge here, this badge has been around a lot longer than Aubameyang, and it, it means a lot more to us than Aubameyang. Mm -hmm. Aubameyang is an employee. He should be committed. The fact of the matter is, he has, has, hasn't come out and said he's committed to Arsenal. So if you're not committed to Arsenal, that means your head is somewhere else. Because that's the first thing, as the ex-captain he should have done, Sophie. First thing, I'm still committed to this football club. The captaincy has been taken off me, but it does not matter. I am fully committed. I haven't been playing well, but I will get on the training ground and I will prove myself again. Heard nothing like that. So, if that's if that's us having an agenda, well, <laughs> you've obviously got the blinders on. Game show clap, Kev. Game show clap right here. Brilliant. Well said. Well put. Um, apparently now, Kev, we got the twenty likes, oh, so I have to do it. Go on, self. Go on. Drum roll. Here In we go, one. Kids. Chaser. Oh, go on with the oh with the Modelo as well. We like it. Tony. <laughs> Need another shot. Get a refill, <laughs> Tone. <laughs> Kevin. So, yeah, that was the Abami Yang thing anyway. Um it's not water, trust me. It is absolutely not water. You can ask Tony, I'll get her here to verify it for it. And he does, he always looks good in red. Kev. Um 100% well said and well put. I think, yes, KC10 name blocked zero. Well done. Well done. Um, Kev, I, for me, I just think, you know, there was a way back for Xhaka, but J it seems like Xhaka's character, like a lot of managers have seen, there's something about him where he's able to earn it back. And right now, Aubameyang's not earning it back. And I don't think he's showing that to the manager either. So, do, do you know what I think? What happened with Jacka? So, Jacka just he, he just got back in and around the team, and he got playing and just played. And he's still messed up, Sophie, hasn't he? And he's, he drives us mad sometimes. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? He just keeps coming back, and he doesn't do crazy things. Off the pitch. He does crazy things on the pitch, but he don't do crazy <laughs> things off the pitch. Do you no, know what I mean? He, so, so therefore, not that we forgive him, but we do forgive him for what he does on the pitch sometimes because he comes back and all of a sudden we're, we're winning. And it's like, 
all right, then, you know, we, we'll accept you. you're in the team now. We don't like you, but we're, you're in the team, you know, one of them ones. But fair play to him, Sophie. Again, you, when you asked me about Xhaka against West Ham, who, who should partner Partey? I said Xhaka should. Even though I know you've not been a fan. We've argued over Xhaka We've too. I defended him for such, such a Xhaka, long time. I think Xhaka is, right now, is Thomas Partey's best partner. I do. Until, until we get somebody better. Yeah. Um, he he never apologised to the fans, but he has slowly done things to illustrate. Okay. And maybe the fans needed to also apologise to him a little bit. That was my take. Can't abuse players. He did wrong. He should never have done that. But at the same time, when you show remorse in some way and you illustrate it, like Kev said, on the pitch, we get killed on the show for defending Xhaka. We get killed on this show for... I mean, Welcome to professional football, well, Sophie. Absolutely. You can't yeah. win. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kev, a lot of people are questioning whether I was doing the old vodka. Um, some thought it was water, of course. So we um, need... So this is why we need Tony to come in with the bottle and refill. Tony... Can you please come here with the bottle of Stolly and refill my shot, please? Because they're questioning whether it was an actual real shot. You don't have to be in camera, but you can just do it right here where you can pour it and they can see it. By the way, my shot glass going to Paris, Kev. Oh, love it. Bit of class. City of lights, eh? A bit of class, eh? I hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Stick a little bit of Stolly in the dog bowl. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, I love it. Um, you guys are crazy. Four hundred and seventy of you in uh, the love time it. in LA is one fifteen in the afternoon. Let me tell you something, Kev. New Year's Eve is the longest day in the world yeah, for I'm Tony sure. and I, right? Because we got family in Australia, South Africa. We got family All the in Hong time Kong, zones. All the and then you go, you go, zones, you go, yeah, you and we're like. Round. When is this going to end? <laughs> <laughs> Follow it round. Love it. Love Absolutely it. love it. All right. So, Kev. Is this um, transfer window? Yeah? Do you want me to do that one? Yes. Okay. Is this transfer window key to a top four challenge for Arsenal? I think it definitely is. And here's my, here's the reason why. Because of AFCON. There you go. i uh, like to show the bottle. It is. Stolly Naya. I'm, oh, I'm sure so we're going to get banned Naya. now on YouTube, you go. but go on then. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Tony. Happy New Year. Happy New Whoa. Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year everybody. Not sure if I'm going to do that before the show ends, but if there's a bet yes, on, I will do will. it. Yes, you will. Don't worry about that. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right, so, Kev, go on. So it, is, it really is the key because of the AFCON. And we didn't really upgrade our midfield with enough quality in the summer. Now, Aubameyang's not there. There's a gaping hole at the top end of the pitch. We're relying on Lacazette to knit it together. But let's be honest, for all the graft that Lacazette does, we don't have that striker who is a 20-goal striker yet. We've got, we've got good wide people. M Martinelli's coming. He's done well. Saka's doing well. Smith Rowe's doing well. But we need that striker doing well. So, if we could get a striker, I'm thinking of one or two midfielders. So, and you know, a name that style thing, player box to box could be a goal scorer in midfield as well. I've got no problem with that. You know, Awa has can get a mention. Wijnaldum can get a mention. Why not get that loan deal going with him? Exactly. We've heard Basuma talked about. We've heard Sanchez, Renato Sanchez been talked about. So we're getting linked with a, a, a lad from Germany. Sophie, we're going to need to strengthen that position because when Thomas Part is not there, Sambi and Xhaka, I worry. I really worry. And explain why, Kev, because as much as some Arsenal fans think that Thomas hasn't hit the heights yet, the combination, the partnerships that we're talking about, you know, um, Sambi, of course, we love him and we think he's got huge potential and he's got huge. the talent. But talk us through that, that why. Sophie, a lot of people won't realise the work and just the little things that Thomas Partey does. 
a little five yard pass there, a little 10 yard pass there. It looks like nothing. It looks like nothing, Sophie. But let me tell you, it is so key to keeping this team moving in the right direction. Now people are starting to see Erdegaard's value. Little five yard, 10 yard pass here and there. And then they're seeing him start to open up a little bit. This is key for us. Really is key. So Thomas Partey in that holding midfield role, a lot of people won't go down his side. So a lot of people won't even want to take him on. Kev, so, when... You know, it's little things like that. He started, it's, it's definitely, he's, there's definitely something brewing with that partnership. Um, but what do you think of Schick and uh, Renato Sanchez? The Coutinho thing, I'm not sold on at all, Kev. Um, look, that's That's been going on for a couple of years now, so hasn't it? Coutinho yes. and the, uh, look, I just think that Barcelona are trying to get him off the wage bill. That's, that's, that's what it. they're trying to do. They're trying to get him off the wage bill. And, Look, I'm not saying Coutinho can't play because Coutinho has been a very good player, but he's been so injury prone. We don't want to be taken, especially he has got the experience. Yes, of course, he's a quality player. But can we really rely on him? I, I don't know. I doubt it. You know, we're being linked with him. We're being linked with uh, so many different players. I, I just think w we need to get this one right, So. We need to get this one right. If a, if a Wijnaldum comes available, take him. Take I know you him. like. I know. I know. I would take him on loan. I, I would do a few. And I yeah, liked what loan, Arteta but, said today but, but, but in the media, him. Kev. Yeah. yeah, like we might be doing some loan deals, and I think that's good for us right now. We don't need to be making any big signings and spending like a shit ton of money. No to kind of get what we need. Let's nickel and dime it. Let's Del Boy it a little bit. Let's make yeah. some deals here and there in the market. I know you like cha these challenged questions. Um, and I do have some YouTube comments I'm going to rattle off as well. Be prepared, guys. If you want to hang out, stay with us. Um, Kev is wrong. None needed. Top midfield. Enough strikers. Ober can work again. I had a bike with a bald tyre. Changed it. And guess what? Bike biked again. Yeah, but you changed it. Yeah. But, but you changed it. We got no, we got no, we got no killer striker. Killer striker doesn't want to be at the football club. And it's not like we're Man City who can play without a striker because they have so many. Ta they, they I mean, have so many talented. Yeah. Play I mean, their squad is ridiculous, right? But we're we're trying to build our squad to get up there. That's what we're trying to do. So great that you're having a ball tire, but how did you change it? You had to do something to change it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to do. We have to do something to change it. And th listen, there are there are a lot of quality players out there, but we have to get this one right, Sophie, because Partey's not going to be there. Even El Nene, as a little bit of backup, is not going to be there. Pepe's not going to be there. So we need maybe some other players to carry the, the, the weight a little bit. We, we, I don't want to rely solely on our youngsters. Because finally, Sophie, our experienced players are complimenting the youngsters. Finally, mm -hmm. they are. So now we get, we take them out, a couple of them out, and we're left with more youngsters. Party Poop has doubled down on a comment that I think is really disrespectful and I don't even want to put it up, Kev. Put it up, Soph. Put it up. It's really pissed me off, to be honest with you. Put it up, Soph. It's all right. I mean, I've, it... don't mess with Soph after she's had a shot of vodka. I'll down. I, I mean, I'm ready to go. Uh, Barbara time. I'm going to put it up. You want me put to it put up. it up? Put it up. Did you sacrifice your own career because you supported the club? You did not do very well at Arsenal and competed against Wrighty. Should you have gone sooner for your own sake? That is such horse shit. No, 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 Sophie. No, no, Sophie. Because what party no, pooper? No one got talks to my boy like that. No, no, no Sophie. What you got to realize is party pooper. Ian Wright wasn't at the club when I was in the first team. Exactly. So you're talking about me going up against Wrighty? No, we were slapping the shit out of Crystal Palace when I was at Arsenal. Wrighty joined us after winning league titles. 
So get it right. Get it through your head. If you know history, you wouldn't even make that comment. But, does he know who scored the goal that got us to the European final? But for Sophie, 90, does he know, Kev? Does he know? But, but Sophie, uh, whether he knows or not, Sophie, when you make comments like that, that tells me more about you. Do you understand? That tells me more about you, party pooper. You have no idea. Being involved at Arsenal, winning trophies, party pooper, is the greatest feeling ever. i done all that. I was winning trophies before Ian Wright came to the club. So... I've done my I've done my bit. And when Ian Wright came to the club, I still was winning trophies. So talking about me leaving a little bit earlier, no. I left at the right time because the time was right for me. That's all. I got no I got no problem with what with what you say, but problem get is you've got to get your right. facts right. That's it. You've got to get your facts right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Kev put that, a shift in. That's why, and that's why, Sophie, when you do put up the pictures of me, Rocky, and all that, where is Ian Wright? Well, let's show party pooper, shall we? Where, where is Ian Wright? Where he's was not Ian there. Wright? Yeah, he's not there. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, where, where, where's Ian look Wright? Look at this. Where, where's Ian Wright? Mm -hmm. Where's Ian Wright? He's not, he's not at the football club party pooper. We're celebrating titles. So, again, I've got nothing to prove. You could say what you like, no problem, but you need to get your facts straight. That's all. Let me tell you, the squaddies are on fire right now. All of them. Yes, Virginia. Yes, K Marlon. Yes, Games. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, Newman. <laughs> These, yes. Come on. Absolutely. Casey, what? yes. Seriously. Who took us there? Smudger, Casey. That's how that... When was the last time we won a European trophy? When was the last time we won a League Cup? Papa, can you hear me? Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> Papa. Yeah, Sophie, look. Uh, listen, I've got no problem with you putting... Difficult questions. No, but like when there's that. disrespect, Kev, it pisses. I don't mind them doing banter, but when it's disrespectful like that, I'm not Sophie, having it. Sophie, but if he doesn't know, I always take the, I always try to take the point. He doesn't know because if you knew, you wouldn't even say that. <laughs> you exactly. wouldn't even say it, Sophie. But because maybe he doesn't know, and he's the party pooper. He's living up to what he wants to be. He wants to be a party pooper. Exactly, Mask Gunner. Casey left because a manager came in. Absolutely, 100%. Casey does have him in his pocket. All right, um, let's keep going on. So... <laughs> Newman's trying to justify everything he's done this season. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe at the end, I'll have a I'll, I'll go, I'll go for you, Newman. Okay. <laughs> So, it, so I said about in this window for a top four challenge, we do need, we need a striker. We need somebody else to help Lacazette. Because let's be honest, if Lacazette gets injured, Aubameyang's not there, we're, we're in trouble. So we're in trouble. So we do need some reinforcements. And so not solely because of the Africa Cup of Nations, but... That's part of us getting a little bit stronger in the second half of the season. If we get a little bit stronger in the second half of the season, AFCON happens and then the boys come back and we're still winning. Now we've got a squad to challenge, definitely challenge for the top four. So it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting. And that takes me to the first question, which is the third question right now. Will we need to rest our super kids, Sophie? Because... If we're still winning and then we get players back from Africa Cup of Nations, then we could start. Smith Rowe's been on the bench a few times. He's been mm -hmm. doing brilliant coming on scoring. He's going to have to play his minutes. And the likes of Saka might be on the bench a, a few weeks. 
But not that he doesn't come on and make a difference. He might get half an hour. So managing minutes, I think, is going to be important as opposed to just being taken out and dropped aside. We might have to manage their minutes a little better. Mm -hmm. But we, we are going to need to rotate a little bit because there is a lot of games coming and there's a lot of winnable games, Sophie. We need to win them. We do. We do. We do need to win them. And I'm not going to do our, um, because we, we picked our, who we'd beat and the points. I'm going to do that after the city game mm -hmm. because we've been kind of spot on super Kev. And when we look at our schedule coming up, you know, we have a North London Derby in January, you guys. <laughs> oh, I'd love to do the double on them, wouldn't you? We've oh. got EFL Cup semi-final. We've got FA Cup third round against your old team, Forest. Forest, Super yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we got, we got Tottenham, we've got Burnley, we've got Wolves, we've got Brentford. We've, we've got a lot of stuff. We've got to pay coming. them back, Solf. Yeah. Want to pay Brentford back. We do want to pay Brent. I think we will. I really do. Want to pay them back. We owe yeah, them. Totally. You're getting a lot of love in the house. And listen, I'm, we're not calling out Mr. Pooper, but we're putting it up because you make a comment like that, you've got to be prepared for the response when you make a comment like that. And Kev has always, always been open to responding to comments, good, bad, and the ugly. Okay. And Sam, thank you so much. Soph and Kev go above and beyond for us week in, week out. It doesn't deserve a like. Then I don't know. Hit the like button, whatever. I had a shot of vodka. I mean... Soph, I think you need to do another one just to calm down. I do <laughs> don't screw with my super Kev. Yeah, Sophie's on it. My, she, don't let her get them shall I you know. <laughs> Wait, shall I shoot it now? Because we're kind of towards the end. We're kind you know of what towards I mean? the end. We've done, we've done the free... Three questions. Haven't and then we? we're going to do... Um, you know what, Kev? We need more likes to get the shot. How about that? I, I agree with you. How many would you like, Kev? How many in, in chat? 460. And how many likes do we have? I don't... I can can't somebody, see that. Can somebody yeah. tell us? Yeah, someone tell us. Apparently, we need to get it to 300. Um, I'm not drunk. Uh, but that shot, I haven't eaten anything. I've been so busy this morning. Right. Once I have the next shot. Get, then... it, get it to 300 <laughs> and then we speak to Sophie for another 10 minutes. Okay, so apparently we need 18 to get to 300. Come on, squaddies. Get to 300 and then Sophie's going to do the stolly. Yeah, totally. She's going to do the stolly. But I love so, it. Look, look, Guna Ross is telling us. It's too late, Virginia. <laughs> Plus, we have to do our predictions. We had our Man City pre-game yesterday. It's getting stormy again here in California. Anyone for a game one. of tennis? I said 2-1, didn't I? I said 2-1 yesterday. Kev, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to it. If it's 3-2, it. are you saying 3-2? If you say 3-2, you've won it again, haven't you? <sighs> Kev, I'm Listen, feeling, I'm know, feeling something. I'm feeling it. Know, Am I crazy? I know Man City can win. I know they can win. But I, I want to go positive on Arsenal. Me too. I, I don't know positive. why. Are we crazy? Of course we are. Oh my God. They've already <laughs> done it. Look, Guna Russ is like, <laughs> smashed it. Smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> Guna Russ is, come on, neck it. <laughs> well, this is going to have to be the end of the show. <laughs> okay. Oh, Sophie. Go, <laughs> go on. Go Listen. On. Uh, okay, fine. Listen, you saw Tony pour it. I am Sparta. <laughs> All right, Kev, here we go. And not only did she pour it, but look how full it is. Oh, even better. I tell you what, that's a nice shot glass. <laughs> it's Paris, baby. I bought it in Paris. Oh, City of it. Lights, romantic trip. Here go we on. go. Oh, my God. I'm going to need a nap after this or a burger. Three, two, one. Go. In down the hatch. There you go. That'll warm you up if it's a bit chilly. As Sophie. Al Pacino said in Scent of a Woman, Hoo <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sophie, there was something that we were, me and you were at loggerheads yesterday, <clears throat> weren't we? For a little bit with Jess. Oh, I'd like to ask you a different spin on this question, though. Can I? Of course you can. I am streaming under the influence. This is terrible. 
<laughs> okay. I like I'm going to just quickly say what I want because I'm still cognizant here. Okay. Okay, so Kev, Lukaku, another Fabrizio Romano comment came out today, mm -hmm. doubling down on La Tauro, et cetera, et cetera. Now my Italiano, I'm going to start speaking Greek. Yasu Kevin, sagabo parapoli, isek, pihe, iperokos, sagabo, mwa. So, come on. Chelsea Football Club. There are teams that players sign for. And I don't want to, like, point the finger at players because I would I would sign on a contract for money, but I also have to feel it, my heart. Where am I going to work? My soul. Kev, do you now agree with me a little bit more about Lukaku being unprofessional, but also you are wearing that shirt today. You already pointed to Party Pooper, the badge, what it means to play and belong to something. The squaddies, they love to come in and uh, this show would be nothing without the squaddies. It would be nothing without our new listeners, our 5,000 new subscribers since May. They come here because there's a place. It's a community. Everyone mm -hmm. gets to have a voice. There's no super chats. No one has to pay to say anything. Mm -hmm. can, can, can we talk about this just a little bit before we go? Yeah, of course we can. And this isn't that lot over there. What I want at my club is different to what happens at other clubs, Sophie. Never forget, they live by the checkbook over there so they can die by it as well. Remember, they can go out and, and, and splash the cash. We can't. But my heart and my love is for this Arsenal. It's for Arsenal. The fact that Lukaku comes out and says he's being used incorrectly. Sophie, that's Tuchel's problem. Because you know what? Maybe Lukaku was lied to. Maybe Lukaku was told, when he signed, we're going to play this way for you. And maybe they're not playing that way, Sophie. So, yeah, I understand him... Coming out and saying it, of course, it's going to upset a few people, Sophie. Of course it is. But I think a lot of it has to be taken into context where he, he, he had a relationship with Laturo uh, at, at Inter. Mm -hmm. Him saying, you know, he'll play for Inter again. What's wrong with saying? He's, he's, not, he's not on a lifetime contract at Chelsea. But you live by that checkbook, Sophie, and you sign the big, biggest players, it, it can come back to bite you. And, and, and do you remember this, Sophie? Do you remember after Obama Yang did not turn up late for the, for the North London derby? Do you remember what Thomas Tuchel come out and said? Do you remember? He come out and said, well... I handled it. I knew how. I know how to handle him because I handled him at, at Dortmund. He came out and said that, like Mikel Arteta, don't know what he's doing. That's disrespectful. Because you got to let people deal with it how they deal with it. But now he's come back on his doorstep. He's not looking so clever, is he? That's all I'm saying, Sophie. But remember, I added on the caveat of the results. If Chelsea were winning all their games, Thomas Tuchel wouldn't be as humbled as he is now. No. But they're struggling, so they've been struggling. They've not won at home in five games. Curtis in the house. Good evening, Curtis. He said, Hi, Curtis. imagine if Obama Yang had said um, what Lukaku said. Obama Yang's, Obama Yang's lost He's done the it in a different way. Yeah, he's lost the captaincy, Curtis. <laughs> What's worse? And he's not even turned around and said, I'm committed to the Arsenal Football Club. So, do you know what? I ain't bothered what happens at Chelsea. They've spent the money. Handle it. Kev, he went back for the money. He, Sophie, he, had, Sophie, he had four clubs ahead of Chelsea, Kev. Sophie, Sophie, I don't particularly care what he went for. I don't know if he went for the money. You don't know. It's just an opinion. 
But the fact of the matter is, Sophie, you sign these top players for a hundred million, you better know how to use him. Is this the case of certain managers like Tuchel, like Mourinho, where everything is great at the beginning? Like I said, when you've won the Champions League, you've won the Super Cup, you've totally transformed what's happening. Um, that, Kev, there's a... Pep has stayed at City longer than he did ever, you know, Bayern and moving on and stuff like that. You know, there's that Antonio Conte, two-year, Mourinho, two-year. Is is he now wearing, is, he, is it starting to wear thin, whatever he's trying to do? Did you also hear, though, about the Pulisic? Um, Lukaku made a, a comment about Pulisic's American accent, and they haven't really, there's, there's, there's definitely stuff going on, Kev. Well, again, Sophie. You never hear this when they when they were winning. You never hear anything. No, you don't. You uh, always say that. Damn, damn you! You never hear. You <laughs> never hear anything when they're winning. All of a sudden, you know, there's dissension. The results are going bad, and all these things start. Apparently, he done this interview a little while ago, but now you're starting to hear it all come out. Apparently, it just aired on um, Sky Italia today. Apparently, but it was done before. So, so when stuff goes good. You never hear it. When it goes bad, then, you know, they start casting the rod inside the water, Sophie. The key for us is, for, for us, we're trying to build something, Sophie. Slowly, slowly, we're trying to build something. Because, fair enough, they get to splash the cash and they could buy the Lukaku's. I mean, look at their squad. Their squad is a world-class squad. They're champion. They won the Champions League. And Tuchel, you're right, is a world class manager, Sophie. He is. But Sophie, when it goes wrong, a lot of the times it goes very wrong. We've seen it happen at Chelsea, where yeah. things have gone very. And I'm not saying that's going to happen with Tuchel, but he's going to have to get a grip of that dressing room quick. What, what, you know, his whole acting like I've come home and stuff. It's it, you and I talked about this when it happened. We were like, he should have come to Arsenal. Like that should, he would have been a happier player playing in our team. You and I, when we said we need a Lukaku, everyone mm -hmm. laughed at us. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that I don't know. Here's the thing too. The double downing on the comments and making them public. He's endorsed that with Fabrizio Romano. There's no doubt about that. And by the way, Curtis, wishing you also a happy new year. You and your family, yeah. You, you and better your get your ass on this show in January, Curtis Shaw. Otherwise, you'll have me to deal with. Me and my, you know. Hey, by the way, I wonder who Curtis thinks is the best manager of the league so far is. Is it? Curtis, are you still here? I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder who thinks it is. <gasps> Oh my goodness! Absolutely brilliant but so, stuff. But so, I believe I believe in Arsenal. What happens at Chelsea? They've got to deal with. You spend that money, Sophie. You've got other problems, and they've been able to handle it. But when it does rear its ugly head, it's it's a lot bigger because it's a hundred million pound signing, isn't it? Can I tell you, Kev? I love to see the pain at United and Chelsea right now. Because you know why? Everyone has pointed the finger at the Arsenal. We have been the dartboard. And we have been the laughing stock. Everyone has had a go at us. And your star striker, your man who came home to you, has come out publicly and basically called your club out. Man United, Ronaldo, Fernandez, whoever. You may have beaten Burnley who hadn't played in three weeks, but I'm sorry, your club is in disarray. Your culture, your DNA is in disarray. See filed under Arsenal Football Club two, three, four, five years ago. Say what you want about Mikel Arteta. Agree or disagree with him. We have a base. We have a core, a foundation to build on. 
And I tell you something, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. Chelsea United, we're coming for you. And I've only had one shot, Kev. You've had two. No. Oh, did I did, did I down the second one too? I did. Well, oh okay, my well god, done. so what's going on? Everyone, what is going on on this show? That shows you it's live and it's <laughs> Listen, this is New Year's Eve. We're we've gone for one hour, 40 minutes, Sophie. What a fantastic New Year's Eve I'm getting show. on the terraces Kev's now, best. Kev. Super, super, Kev, super, super, Kev, super, super, Kev, super, Kevin Campbell. Oh, thank you. All right, you. I'm going to let you close the show, but I want to say something, all right? Okay. All right? Okay. Yep. I'm not rat ass at all. I'm, <laughs> Dude. I'm a film industry chick. I've lived with the best of them. I've been there. I've hung out. I've done it. All right. I just haven't eaten today. And you know what? I'm still sober. I'm going to go for an in and out burger as soon as this show's ended. Okay. <laughs> but let it. me tell you something. The Highbury squad. When the Highbury squad started, it was something that I worked really hard on. And there's been an evolution. And I don't want to talk about the evolution and the process, but all I want to say is since the new Highbury squad has come to fruition, we have grown, we have sown, and there's so many people from around the world that have joined us. But this man here is the ultimate human being. Let me tell you something about Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. When I wake up every day, I have a message and it gives me an inspiration, a boost to get myself going. When I want to maybe take a day off, he must say something and I'm in. You guys, our community, what we're building, what we've built from the originals who've been here from the very beginning to the new people that have come in since May. Let me tell you something. We are so happy we're so proud. You guys have been an incredible extension of everything that we're doing. We want to tell stories. We just don't want to talk about tactics, post-game stuff. We want to bring you stories, whether it's a trip down memory lane, inside the dressing room, no matter what show it is, what we want to do is share. And having this legend who has been there across all the lines, is incredible. Super Kevin Campbell, can I just say, without getting too emotional on New Year's Eve, I love you. You're an incredible human being. You inspire me every single day. And what you do to come on this show, our show, and do what we're doing is amazing. And everything you do in the Arsenal community, you are one of the few players that just connects with fans on a totally different level. It is unprecedented. And I love seeing you with Ty and you go to all of his games and people don't see a lot of stuff that you do, but everything you do matters. And I just wanted to say my greatest gift in this year that has been the toughest year in all of our lives is having you keep me going and keep me like focused on don't give up. Life's going to go back. We're going to keep going, and you've given me hope, Super Kevin Campbell. You've given me hope. Well, that's really appreciate your words, Sophie. I, it, you know, it's um, for me, it's a pleasure. Obviously, we linked up, and I started coming on just as a guest. And because of the lockdown, we decided to to go every day virtually through the lockdown, didn't we? And our community has grown. And listen, we, we agree, we disagree. We are a family. We are a family now. We're a community and a family. And I absolutely, it's a privilege for me to come on. I know I can't be on all the time, but whenever I can go, come on, I will come on. And I always tell it through my eyes. And a lot of people don't see it through my eyes. And I, I respect that. You know, I don't always agree with the people on the comments, but 
I accept it because you know what? One thing about football is opinions matter. My opinion and your opinion are just different, that's all. But I respect your opinion, just like Party Pooper. I respect his opinion. But all I got to say to him is, know your facts before you make them, those sort of comments. That's all. You know, no, no, no problem for me. People, It's not for me to say whether he's disrespectful or not. But do get your facts. But you, Sophie, you have been incredible. To the community, to the guests who have come on, you've given the Arsenal sphere and Arsenal media a different look. You have given it a different look. And I appreciate you so much. I love sending you those messages because I know how much it means to you. And I love engaging with all of the squaddies and the newbies that, that come in. I like to hear when you tell me that the squaddies are getting people in check in the, in the chat and all that kind of things because we're looking after each other. So, do you know what? I, I want to say to the squaddies, to you, Sophie, and to everybody who's been on the show and everybody who's going to come into 2022 with us, let's make the new year even more special. We're going to give you new shows. We're going to give you insights into different things. We're going to try and get more players on. We're going to try and get get you more of a feel of the heartbeat of Arsenal. But what you've got to do, you've got to play your part, squaddies. That's all you've got to do. Play your part, turn up, and let us entertain you. And if you like it, you know what to do. Smash it. Hit it. Can you stick a Vinny up there? Do a Vinny. I'll do it. Let me Touch find it, it. Smash it up. And like it. Because it really means the world to us when My we get boy. a lot of likes. It means the world to us that you like what we're doing. And you know what? Whether you like it or dislike it, we appreciate you anyway. So, squaddies, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Sophie's heart, from the bottom of the hybrid squad's heart, I sincerely hope you all have happy, healthy, prosperous, and a year filled with gratitude. Because you know what? There are times where you think you're in a difficult situation and there's a lot of other people who are in a lot worse positions than a you. A lot worse, Kev. And Trust I, I've, I've, I've got to keep putting some of these comments up because they're amazing. Uh, but that's our community. Our community is amazing. The boys and girls and men and ladies and everybody who, who comes into this, this, I, this, I, this I, space. I, I've, I would also like to say something because... You guys, you think what you may think, but sometimes some people don't say things and others are more vocal. Just know that what happens here is for all the beauty of our club. There's no one self-centered here. This is all about our team, our love for our team, whether we agree or disagree, okay? And Super Kev is a legend. And you guys get to interact with him all the time. And our show has evolved, but it's evolved for the better, for the greater, for the good. And I couldn't think of a better way to spend my New Year's Eve in a time where life is difficult with all of you. Okay. And um, Kev, you are an inspiration to me all the time, every time, every day. And I know I've had two shots of vodka live on air, but it's not the reason why I'm saying this. Everyone knows this already. So that's all I have to say on my part. I wish you all a very, very healthy and happy new year. Some of you have already rung it in from all the corners of the earth that we've mm -hmm. talked about. The Highbury Squad is all about content and creating content that, helps move our club forward whether we agree or disagree that's mm -hmm. our goal mm -hmm. and you're going to see a lot of great stuff for us in 2022 and i'm just going to let kev close the show because we'll be back tomorrow after we beat man city what is your prediction kev 2-1 i've said it 2-1 I, I i truly believe we could win the game 2-1 i truly believe we can 
If we don't, we don't. But I truly believe we can. And belief is part of the foundation. We've got to believe. Got to believe in these boys. You know, we really have to believe in these boys. And you know what I'm going to say to all the squaddies, wherever you are in the world? If it's bedtime for you, have a good rest. If you're, you're behind in the time or you're, you're in the UK and you're coming up to, to whatever time, your loved ones, tell them you love them. Nice people, be kind to people. And if you get an opportunity, raise a glass to yourself and to your loved ones and friends because you know what without them we got nothing we've got nothing with everyone we have the memories and memories are everything we have the memories on here we've got it recorded so raise a glass whether it's alcoholic or not doesn't matter take the time to be thankful for this year that you live to see Another year come in because it really does make a difference. So, squad and to all those that have lost Kev in the Arsenal oh, yeah. community. Oh, every everyone. And everyone. Betty White, what a legend! But also anyone in the Arsenal community to those we've loved and lost. Here's to you. To you, squaddies. The last one, love your squaddies, take good time, take good care, and at ease, squaddies. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.